Okay, and welcome back. Another week. It's the week before, the week before Halloween. And if you're interested at all in getting involved with our wonderful Brad and Jeff Halloween contest, do look at the homepage at rents.com. And if you are an artist, get busy. If you've got a ghost story, take a look at those. There's some fascinating ones up there already. All right, we have lots of ghosts and uh, creeps and creatures running around our nation's capital. Here to talk about the state of the campaign season and more is Tex Mars, who is with us once a month, and we're very honored always to have Tex with us. Are you there, my friend? Hey, I sure am, Jeff. Good to be with you again. Welcome back. And every month, uh, stranger things seem to be going on. It is wild. (laughs) Uh, What we're going to talk about is what Tex calls the Hobson's choice in deciding for whom to vote. And we're going to discuss if Romney wins, what may happen, and if Obama wins, what will happen. This is this is two, I have never seen anything more evenly divided between two horrific, disgusting, vile, evil people in my lifetime. And I'm not, I don't think I'm overstating it. No, you're, you're not overstating it, Jeff. And it's interesting. It it seems to be, you know, Hobson's choice is when you, you know, whichever way you go, you get shafted, you know. That's right. Uh, and uh, to put it in a cliche, uh, and uh, if Romney wins, the question is, uh, will Mitt Romney and his pal, Bibi Netanyahu, pitch America into a bawling cauldron of Leviathan, I call it Zionist hell. Yep. And will yep. will will cartel capitalism, Zionist capitalism, of the Wall Street uh, variety uh, and the Fed uh, Reserve variety uh, use a fascist police state to run amok and take away our freedoms uh, in uh, the American experiment that's since right. the 1776. That, that's our Obama, that's mm-hmm. our Romney. That's our Romney wins. Scenario. All right, and yeah, let me just run Romney through that. Wins. Yeah, let me go that again. Yeah, it, uh, it's amazing. Quick. We have a fascist police state. Yes, and that's been building. You know, George uh, W. Bush and Cheney. We had eight years of growth uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, of a police state. Yep. And uh, now ne- we have neocon. the drones flying overhead and all that from uh, yeah. both uh, Bush and Obama. Yeah, neocon police state. Uh, Netanyahu and Romney, as you folks know, go way back. Uh, Romney has pledged to attack Iran within six months of taking office. He has, of course, the formal endorsement of the Zionist Jewish State of Israel, unlimited money. You've seen the uh, polls, phony and otherwise, close up, as I, as I said, and a lot of people said they would. This is, this is quite clearly an issue of Zionist Jewish banking cartel money dictating once again who will be running this country. Go ahead, Tex about Obama, and if he wins. Well, now, if Obama wins, we, we, we have a, a very interesting situation because Obama has been systematically all, almost uh, the, the stealth anti-Israel candidate while uh, pledging his fealty and his loyalty uh, to the Zionist uh, super state. He actually has been undermining it, and now he's got his... Uh, I call them the three main people, Susan Rice, uh, Valerie Jarrett, and uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these three, I believe, if Obama wins, may well make life hell for Jewish-run Wall Street and for Zionist Israel. And the question then becomes, you know, unlike if Romney wins, if Romney wins, will we get the fascist police state, uh, the best that Wall Street can uh, give us, you know, a crony capitalism, but here if Obama wins, will the socialist police state right. bulldoze right. our freedoms? So this seems to be the Hobson's choice, yeah. the fascist police state yeah. or the socialist police state. It's interesting about Obama. He's got his little coterie, his court, his uh, cabal, mm-hmm. uh, and most of them are black. Rahm Emanuel, in a very little notice. Um, uh, news item uh, two weeks ago quit the campaign. He pulled out. He was one of the national co-chairpersons. Uh, I don't know, Very, co-ballerina or whatever. Right. <laughs> co- no, good. Yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Pod to Obama, do. He pulled yeah. out. 
Yeah. He said he's no longer going to be head of uh, yeah. one of the co-heads uh, of Obama's yeah. campaign. Uh, so he's a real great money man. He gets that money from the Jewish contributors, but evidently it's not going to go to Obama. Now, Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch of Fox News, a neocon guy, mm-hmm. says it will be a nightmare for Israel if Obama wins. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the consensus. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, the Jews now are frightened to death, just like they were when Nixon was running for his second term uh, and when Kennedy was running. I think the consensus among the Jewish Zionists is we must get rid of these people. If we can't defeat them in the election, well, there are other alternatives, as the, you know, the, uh, the editor of the Atlanta Jewish newspaper uh, mentioned. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, I know, exactly right. That's a very good scenario. We do have a choice, but, you know, in, in either direction, it's like standing on a tightrope, and it doesn't matter which way you fall, left or right, you're going down. Uh, we can either have fascism or Bolshevik socialism. I mean, in either case, we're going to have uh, jackbooted police that are just pushing and, and struggling against uh, whatever freedoms we may have left to knock them down. Yeah, and you know something very interesting. I keep being asked questions on on shows that uh, are not, they're not they're not exactly as sharp as you are on the issues, Jeff. But they still want to know this question about an October surprise. Uh, will o- Obama main uh, you know manage to stay in by coming up with an October surprise? You know, uh, you know what happened in October, for example, when the Iranian hostages were released. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were kept all the way to the end of the, you know, the uh, the, the day yeah. uh, after the election, which for sure. sort of spelled the end for uh, Jimmy Carter yep. and the uh, uh, Ronald Reagan's election. But it's I, I think one of the October surprises is already ongoing, and it's that the elite are keeping the price of oil up to ni- over ninety dollars a barrel, and that means the price of uh, gasoline has been increasing. Mm-hmm. Even though the whole world is flooded with excess surplus oil sure. and gas, sure. nevertheless, they artificially are driving up the price right. simply to hurt Obama. Of course, of course. Now you know, not people out there are going to say you're you're defending uh, Obama. You're trying to help. No, I'm I'm, I'm really just saying. You know, uh, it's up to the people what you want, but don't think that Romney is going to suddenly. Be another, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, uh, Thomas Jefferson. It's, it's that's a crazy idea. Not I'm happen. not. I'm not saying. You know, I've. In fact, I was very hopeful. No, well, I really wasn't that hopeful, Jeff. But a little bit of me about a year ago said, "Wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody like a Ron Paul could, yeah, uh, unseat these?" Uh, well, we talked monsters. about it right here. Uh, we actually did say that, and I, I remember those yeah. kinds of uh, remarks. I mean, that's what I wanted, but now we're stuck yeah. with this. And, you know, it's sort of the question, it's sort of an interesting one. Uh, four more years of Obama or eight years of Romney? But, of course, either one could end elections for good yes. and become just dictator yes. uh, during their term. So that's not even legitimate uh, either. Here's sort of the interesting thing, though. Romney, among the Jewish press, has now become the hope and change candidate. Of course, the Jews have told them... Puff up Romney. Make him the star. That's exactly correct. Precisely. 